but one question which has always uh, puzzled me and you know is it when i see you know various animals birds and all those things they also do what we do right they make their own nest we make our own houses and then they feed their children they have a family and so do we so what is the sole purpose of coming to this earth when we say like you know we are born so it means before we were born we were somewhere or whatever it, it is i that that i don't know so but once we are born what is the purpose why why we are born as human beings and what we should do we are here to make planes trains and you know all this physics develop these and do research and all this stuff or what is the sole purpose first of all the first part is said deliver by this atom and this super super string there is a way above my head let me tell you it's way above all the scientists head too they are struggling this is the honest ones will tell you we don't know what we are talking about anyway <coughs> You know, when you go to the mature scientists, the mature ones, they tell you, the more we dig deeper, the vaster the whole enterprise. We are really, at the, if you like, standing on the abyss, a you know, huge abyss. We don't know. It's dramatic. It's nice to be mature and humble. And the mature scientists get humbled by their own discoveries. The immature ones, of course, like Stephen Hawking, was, oh, we have sorted everything out and nothing is sorted out. We're in a big mess here. So, in a way, science is in a way prodding us that look, this, if you like, a strongly materialistic approach, it seems to be falling short of the target. You seem to be struggling. You need to invoke something more than matter in order to give explanation regarding this world that we see in front of us. There's more to us than matter. So, science, in a way, is also putting his hands up. So, not only you, scientists are putting hands saying we are really struggling. It's best that they are humble, and they are humble by their own experience and their own understanding. The mature ones. The immature ones think we have sorted everything out. And I tell you, this idea of reducing everything to lump of matter and its attributes has now been thrown out by science. It's, it's misty, very mystical in the sense that it is very highly complex, it's never reductionist, it's never kind of linear, it's always complex, non-linear. And it is so in, enshrouded in, in complexity to such an extent, they say, we, there is, this is the genome projects, for example. They gave up saying that, look, we can't relate why this attribute is related to this part of the gene. We have given that up. It's very complex. The whole thing itself so strongly intertwined that we can't really suss it out anymore. So this simplistic reductionist approach that we saw in, 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 in modern physics or modern science has now been thrown out, saying that it fails, at, fails, fails the purpose. So scientists are struggling. And nothing difficult. But the second question you ask, is very close to the heart of every serious seeker. The, sec the second question is a very pointed one. You're not saying how, you know, so the three strings are kind of, the strings are connected and how this universe, no, no, we don't know about how. We want to know about why. The why question is always a deep question. The how, the where, the when, the what, they're secondary questions. But the why is always digging deeper. You see, what is all this stuff? Let me just again tidy up. It's good for us to understand this stuff. Whenever we throw out questions of where, when, what, etc., in a way we are trying to get a grasp of reality using, if you like, this idea of causality, cause and effect, linking everything and everybody. So these questions are in a way trying to gain a grip, get a grip on reality by asking these questions, why, what, what, etc. And out of all these questions, the one that really, you know, pro probes deeply is the why question. Always remember the why question will knock you out. It will always make you go deeper. The why will make you go deeper. Again, this is a human ploy. You see, the word why is a human idea. Because you say, why did we, why did we come here? Why? So the word is very much a human kind of approach to this deeper idea of digging into the nature of reality. That's what we are on about. So this question is why all this? Very blunt question. See, I'm falling back, living from abstraction into a personality. From principle, I'm moving into personality. Please let me, leave me alone. <laughs> this answer was given by Swami Vivekananda on the 19th of September, 18, I remember the date even, 19th of September, 1893. Do you know where? At the Parliament of Religion. At Parliament of Religion, he, gave, he asked the answer to this question. He said, this question has always puzzled humanity. Why does God create? Why this creation? What was God lacking that he had to create? Did he have unfulfilled desires? Because then in some Vedas you spend, God had desire to multiply and all that. You see, you get here to desire to love and that love showed up as a reality of this creation. 
Vivekan is too sharp for that. He can't fall for that trap. The why question is still not properly answered. Because if you say there's any reason why God has to create because he's lacking something or he's desiring something, then the poor God has lost his powers, or powers, you know, he's become like one of us. Poor chap, you know, he's struggling as well. He needs to go to the boxing day sale as well. Oh dear. <laughs> you know, reduce him to that level very fast. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Now, if I give you a secondary answer, you know, try to fob buy you out. He's trying to make us strong and he wants to, all of us to enjoy spirituality so we can look at ourselves. Oh, we are so clever, we are spiritual. It's all secondary. You know, it falls flat, doesn't really carry. The answer given by Swami Vivekanand, and I love it because he threw it at the parliament of religion of all places. This is where he threw it out. He says, the Hindu is not going to give you, fob you off. The Hindu is not going to take you for a ride. And when you ask this very rough question, why the creation? He said, the Hindu is not going to give you a, a second, rate, second rate answer. He's going to give you the blunt answer. <laughs> Asha, why you know the answer? <laughs> the answer that comes from Hinduism regarding why all this, why oh why, why oh why. The blunt answer to a blunt question from the highest of Hindu, the, the flight of philosophy of the Hinduism comes from this most major master, modern master. Everybody else will give you some, some kind of answer to buy you out. It's, you know, it's, it's really short of the target. You all know it. He knows it. But he'll still dish it out and you'll swallow it because you, you want to believe in God. But the answer that came from Vivekan was very blunt. He said, oh, the question, why this creation? The Hindus are very blunt about this. He said, they give a blunt answer. They say, we don't know. <laughs> You may say, oh, this is terrible. After all this, you give us an anticlimax. You see, you, God doesn't, even you don't know why this creation? Yes, we don't know. This is the lovely answer. This question does not have an answer. You say, oh, dear, this is terrible. Every question must have an answer. We say, don't you see? When you use your intellectual faculties to grap grapple with the reality, there are some questions that will arise which will have no answer, will stay hanging loose. The only good part about that thing is it will prod you to dig deeper. In order to resolve the answer, to, in order to get the answer, the only way you can get the answer, the same question was asked to Ramakrishna, saying, but tell us Mother Goddess, why this creation? He said, okay, I'll check, make sure. Next time I see her, I'll ask her. You see, he's like that. He's, he's very open. You know, he's this guileless chap. He's got nothing to hide. He's genuine about everything. And then he came and said, look, the problem is every time I see Mother Goddess, the question becomes, disappears. And every time I don't see the question, Mother Goddess, the question reappears. So the resolution of this question of why or why is God experience. The only way this, this thing that kind of like a, like a prod continues to prod you saying, I don't understand, why did you create? Why did you create? You won't answer? The only where, place where this question will become irrelevant is God experience. That's the only place. So the only good part about this very rough question is that it will force you to find your essential nature of the spirit and this, what is reality all about. So it's nothing, best thing about this question. The answer bluntly in intellectual terms is we don't know. The resolution lies purely at experiential level, not at the intellectual level. That's what he's saying. Experientially, you can, you can surpass it. So in a way, this, this rough question that is like a thorn on our side, will in a way, this is hurting me, it's hurting me. And that thorn in your side will force you to resolve this issue by experiencing God for yourself. There the resolution comes, because there the question doesn't appear somehow. But the moment you are in this world, all the questions arise. Remember I started my talk by saying, Vivekananda said, look, remember to see things from different viewpoints. When I'm in that state of, you know, uh, enlightened state of the I am the spirit, all these questions appear irrelevant. They don't arise at all. They don't spring up even. There's no room for them to spring up. But when I'm feeling that I am the mind and the body, and I get a pain in my stomach, I say, oh, mommy, please help me. And you try and resolve the issue by focusing on the super person. I say, oh, mommy, mommy, please, I've got a stomach, a stomach ache. See, this ability to resolve issues, taking into account the context in which you're operating, the ans contextual answer is, in these terms, the answer is, we don't know. Be blunt. Somebody asks, I say, I don't know. You know what Ramakrishna used to say, go and ask God. Because <laughs> I, I, I don't know. When he created the universe, he did not put me in the council. You know, come on now, advisors. How are we going to create? What are we going to He said, he was, I was not invited. So I don't know why he created. You ask him, go to him and ask him. But what he's meaning is that when you find God, the question becomes irrelevant. 
Until that, it will continue to push you towards God. So that's the only good part about the question. It's a very good, it's the most pointed question anybody can fire. Thank you for firing it.